What is up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here and this is the next movie installment in the Halloween franchise that I am going to review. The fifth installment of Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. So Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers was released in 1989. This is the follow up to 1988's Return to Michael Myers. And this movie's budget was five to six million dollars and the box office was 11.6 million. After the release of Halloween 4, the whole cast members and the crew were involved very, very quickly to make another Halloween film that would become this installment. The director for this movie was Dominic Anthony Gillard, who had never ever directed any of the other Halloween movies previously and it was produced by Ramsey Thomas and the writing was done by Michael Jacobs and the, the director and Shem Bitterman. The music was done once again by Alan Haworth and it's on for almost an hour and 40 minutes. Now out of all of these sequels in the Halloween franchise I would immediately have to say that Halloween 5 is one of the most rushed and put into production movies that were so, so difficult to accept them. Because with a movie this rushed, as Halloween 5 is and other movies that were quickly made after a previous installment, you're not going to think that this is going to go down very, very well. So after the events of Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, after Michael gets shot down brutally, falls down to the mine shaft, and after the events of Jamie stabbing the stepmother from the foster family, Michael goes into a river after apparently surviving an explosion from the TNT that one of the cops decides to put inside the mine shaft. Michael goes into the river without any explanation. Michael suffers with a coma after going into a hermit's place for one year. So he basically stays there. And as with Jamie, we know how the ending of Halloween 4 turned out to be, which was one of the best endings in the Halloween franchise. Jamie suddenly has been admitted to a children's hospital and she is apparently mute. She was still suffering very, very badly with the seizures and nightmares of her uncle, Michael Myers, that it, it just really makes this very confusing right from the start. We have no explanation why this character was mute in the first place, and we just don't have any circumstance of really seeing anything that happens of Jamie becoming mute after the events of Halloween 4. After this year had passed, when Michael had suffered a coma inside the hermit's place, he awakens by putting on his mask and kills the hermit, and it's basically him once again to find Jamie Lloyd. You know, it's, it's like Halloween 4, but I will have to admit that... This movie is far from beyond one of these confusing installments. And Jamie, after the beginning, gets visits from the Foster family's daughter, Rachel, again played by Ellie Cornell, and her friend Tina, portrayed by Wendy Kaplan, came with her to see Jamie. But then the movie just goes into moments that were very cheap and unexpected. We see the part of Rachel getting stabbed and killed off way too early. That's another thing that I did not like in this movie. Dr. Sam Loomis, again portrayed by Donald Pleasance, I will have to admit that his performance as Dr. Sam Loomis was good, but at the same time, it was something really, really melodramatic. And it's not as much of a bigger, exciting thing like 
his performance in Halloween 4. There was a lot going on with some great performances and delivery. A lot of action with guns blazing all over the place and more of the terror that had happened from the previous film. But in Halloween 5, the film just suddenly transcends into moments of complete misery. And while I do give Donald Pleasance a lot of credit for him as Dr. Sam Loomis in this movie, but his performance, juvenile and not as thrilling, and that is a big shame. Some of the acting is so weak, and Wendy's performance as Tina, the friend of Rachel, she is really consistent in this movie until close to the very end. And she was absolutely grating. One of the worst characters that was very annoying to begin with. And her dialogue, the way the script was written and made for this movie entirely, Tina could have been involved in like a different type of movie than a Halloween movie. And while I would give Wendy credit for giving us something just something to make it worth the while. When it comes to Halloween fans, a lot of them will say that Tina is one of the annoying ones. But then suddenly, later on, after the traumatizing moments of Jamie having seizures, having visions of Michael Myers coming back for her, she speaks at really close to the halfway point of the movie, and I thought, what? What was the point of having Jamie mute from the start of this movie? Because she was not mute in Halloween 4, and some of the pacing in this, it was far too slow. Especially with the scenes of the Halloween party that Tina was at. And with Tina's other friends of Spitz and Sam, the barn scene was really boring. Filled with something, building up for a jump scare, then it ends to a complete prank, then it happens again, ruined by a prank. And I thought, Michael, come on, terminate these people, please. And then Michael shows up with one of the better kills in this film, like the killing of Tina's boyfriend, and with some of these cops being brutally murdered, and I'm not going to really go into it so much, but Halloween 5 has moments of execution that was poorly portrayed and filmed. The cinematography by Robert Draper was good. I think that his shots were dark and creepy in places, and I like the idea of having Michael Myers' home being really present. It was different to how it looked from the previous movies, but I do like it that they decide to bring that house back. The moment of Michael Myers staring at Jamie and taking off his mask and to see one tear from him, one little cry, that threw me off completely. Because Michael Myers right from the first Halloween movie, did not show any emotion. The human doesn't speak a word, very quiet, mysterious, and one of the creepiest horror icons of all time. And now he sheds a tear? Seriously. And with the ending to this movie, where Dr. Sam Loomis brutally beats him so much with a piece of would, after tranquilizing him multiple times with a tranquilizer gun, falls down, suffers a stroke lying on top of him. After Michael Myers was imprisoned in jail, just as Jamie was about to go home, the man in black figure comes out, goes inside the police station, shoots every cop in sight, and to have a jailbreak for Michael Myers to escape, and when Jamie enters the police station, she realizes that the terror is not over, the credits roll. And also, the guy that played Michael Myers was not George P. Wilbur, like he did in Halloween 4. Michael Myers was portrayed by Don Shanks, who I think did a decent job, but 
All that aside, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, does have some good moments. Some decent cinematography to some of the kills and the acting, with mainly Dr. Sam Loomis. Despite it being difficult at the same time, and with Daniel Harris as Jamie Lloyd, as an excellent performance once again. Ellie Cornell with Rachel before she did get killed off from Michael. But this movie did have promise, half good and half bad, because I really liked Halloween 4 very, very much, without a doubt. And as I said, that it was my favourite sequel in the Halloween franchise. And with that being said, I am going to give Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, 2.5 out of 5 stars. I could possibly tolerate this movie bit more than Halloween 3, but Halloween 3 wasn't garbage, it was just not that great. But Halloween 5 was a sequel that I almost wanted to dislike, much more sometimes than Halloween 3, but it was just something very difficult in comparison to Halloween 4, and even with the previous movies. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.